Hello and welcome to the Mega Brew Van channel. So I'm going to do a video about driving, driving Mega Bread Van. Now um, my history of driving is non-existent really. Um, I took driving lessons when I was 21 so that was ooh, getting on for 40 years ago. Uh, no not 41, 40 years ago. I'm making myself very old. Uh, 1991 so yeah it's um, 30 years ago um, yeah I feel old but uh, not that old but yeah 30 about 30 years ago uh, in a Peugeot 205 GRD and uh, I didn't do too brilliantly um, the instructor was a one-man band he had a brand new Peugeot he didn't want to get broken and a lot of shouting went on a lot of nastiness and so on um, it turned out not to be very, very patient really. Um, in the end I took 30 lessons and I think halfway through that uh, I switched to having lessons every two weeks because I couldn't afford it. Um, and ironically I worked for a bus company so people used to say, oh do you drive for them? No. So yeah, that didn't work out very well. Um, so fast forward to 2005, end of 2005, beginning of 2006. Uh, I bought myself a 50c2 scooter, which I still have. It's in my garage, and it's not been used for a good sort of 10, 10 years, 15 years probably, um, when my son was born. So I only used it for like two years, three years tops. And uh, like this van, it is also sans permis, so I could actually scoot around on that. And it was quite useful when I was learning French because I had to go. Uh, to a school, well, it's not a school, it was a sort of, um, I don't know, a sort of charity type thing because uh, um, it meant I had free lessons, I couldn't really afford those either, free French lessons uh, in Corbeil-Essonne, which is uh, about 15 kilometres from here, it's in the Paris suburbs. So I used to scooter across to there quite early in the morning so I could have a coffee and chat in English to the teacher who was from Benin and um, it served me quite well during that time but it was terrifying uh, being on two wheels especially in the winter with uh, black ice everywhere uh, even at a, a 30 mile an hour speed was still quite scary and people were quite considerate to scooters and probably two wheels in general um, but uh, I wouldn't call myself uh, a motorbike person but uh, it was useful um, and so my kids came along and uh, I just, I don't know, I was quite terrified about the idea of driving. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people are in the same position and they feel quite ashamed about it. Everybody else around them is learning to drive. Everybody else about them can drive. My wife can drive. I can't. Which is why I bought this van. Because I thought that when I bought it, it would be a good way of me learning. Um, and now we're sort of five years on five years of ownership almost uh, I think I bought it in July actually and uh, I'm recording this in in June um, so yeah almost five years of ownership of my van and I've not ventured out of the village so yeah that's how it is unfortunately um, I'm sort of like poodling around the village in my van and uh, I think the furthest I go is to where my family-in-law lives, which is on the edge of the village, almost into the next town. Um, but things have changed. Um, the limit in the village is now 30 kilometres an hour, which is ridiculous, I suppose, for a lot of people. Um, and it feels a bit strange to be going around at 30 kilometres an hour in this, because you can do, well, I can do probably about 55. Not supposed to do 55, but it will get up to that, more or less, which still isn't very fast. Uh, in the grand scheme of things um, and the village um, has a road in from the Paris side I'd say because uh, that's where the most of the, the, the suburbs are and built up areas are uh, which used to be 50 kilometres an hour and it's now 50 on the first tiny bit and then 30 and if you go beyond that towards the next town or into the next town the, the road is I shall stop putting my hand on the chair because I think I'm knocking the camera about um, camera sitting on the chair um, on the seat so yeah the the road into the next village is a dual carriageway or was 
It is now being turned into a single carriageway road by the use of plastic bollards down the down the middle of the, the carriageway, uh, or in the middle of the lanes, basically. So, and that is now limited to 50 kilometres an hour too. So it's a good opportunity for me to probably uh, spread my wings a bit and get into the next town. But I find um, things a little bit terrifying because I suffer very badly with anxiety. It's something that's come from something else in my life, which I won't talk about too much at the moment. Uh, if you head over to the um, Mega Bad Van Notes channel, I think I mentioned a few things in my past. Uh, this channel isn't for that. Uh, so basically I suffer with anxiety, uh, which means that if we take something like an auto route where, where everything is like open, I, I end up with vertigo and I end up feeling really quite ill. Um, and since last year, when we have the big trips uh, on holiday, I'm tending to take the train and my wife's tending to drive. So um, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been outside of the village, because Around here, the countryside is quite flat and open. Not many hedges in between fields. It just, it just, it's probably an agoraphobic nightmare. I don't think I suffer from agoraphobia because I do actually go outside. But um, to give you an idea, if it's all empty and open like that, it makes me feel very anxious. And that is not a good thing when you're driving. Having a panic attack at the wheel is not the best thing to happen. And I don't want to cause an accident. I don't want to have an accident myself, you know, uh, on my own, because that is quite entirely possible. Um, so I prefer to stay around the village. But I need to find a way of being able to overcome all this. So anyway, from now on, I'm going to be including a few clips of video from my driving. Uh, in this case, on a dash cam. Uh, because it shows you, well how my driving's going, first of all, in a quite easy way, but it also shows you the different weird it is in France, where you have priority, and you don't have priority, um, traffic calming. Oh, sorry about that, I got rudely interrupted by my camera, because it overheated. Um, the temperature is, is, it's been quite hot lately, and it's going to overheat again. Uh, well, I'll keep talking anyway, because I think that the, the camera's actually working, but the previous screen just sw switches off on its own for some reason. So I'll keep talking. Hopefully this will record something. Um, so yeah, uh, it's been hot for the last couple of weeks. It's been hitting 30 degrees quite regularly. Um, my DJI's, my action cam, does not like that. It, it just switches off. Or at least the screen switches off, which is what I'm hoping at the moment as I'm talking to you. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I put a few videos together for you and I hope you'll enjoy them. So here you go.
So I've decamped to my office and I've had to stop using the external mics, the battery went flat and as I said my camera overheated so I've had to put it in the first time I've done it actually I've had to put it in the fridge for about 10-15 minutes to cool it down so hopefully it's going to work in the office where the temperature isn't as hot as in my van my camera has just done the same thing the screen has gone off it says something is switching off because it's overheating um, we'll carry on yeah so anyway I hope you enjoyed the videos and uh, if you have any comments about the various things uh, featured in them uh, in the clips because they're dash cam clips um, then feel free to to let me know what you think take care of yourselves and i'll see you in another video take care bye support mega red van here yeah.